Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday service. I hope you've had a good peaceful week and perhaps managed to get out and enjoy a little bit of the sunshine. I know I've tried to. Today is the seventh Sunday after Easter, Pentecost. In fact, it takes us to the end of the Easter season. Christ has ascended back to his Father and the disciples are waiting expectantly in Jerusalem as he told them to do. They're waiting for the one he's promised them, the one who's going to be with them forever. Try to imagine the scene if you can. These disciples, hidden away, have been with Jesus now for three years. Despite all the incredible things they've been through, they have got no idea what is about to happen to them. How the Holy Spirit is going to descend upon them with the sound of a rushing wind. And then how tongues of fire are going to reach out and touch their heads. And they're going to be able to speak in every language known under the sun. And all of this before breakfast at nine o'clock in the morning. But more of that from Suzanne and Adam in a bit. So let's just take a moment of quiet to bring ourselves reverently into the presence of the Lord. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To you be glory and praise forever. Raised to your right hand on high, the ascended Christ shows the Prince of Love and bestows on us the gift of grace. As your Spirit renews the face of the earth, may we bring forth the fruit of the Spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A reading from the second book of Acts, starting at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons 
and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, good evening. I wonder whether you've been following the news, and no, I'm not going to open a debate here on that trip to Durham, but I do know a lot of people that have made the decision not to follow the news as closely as they were at the start of the restrictions. Well, in case you missed it, there was a significant announcement this week. Yes, the Premier League will be back in a couple of weeks' time and starting with my club, Aston Villa, as they go to battle against Sheffield United. I know, I know it's hard being a footballer a supporter sometimes, particularly supporting the Villa, but they do have good church roots, having been founded by a Methodist church in 1874. Anyhow, it reminds me of a story about a young footballer called Callum. There he is playing in a really challenging match. His team are one nil down and they're being hacked to bits by the opposition who are physically much stronger. At half time, the manager says to his players, there's only one way to win this lads. Get the ball to Callum, play him through. His blistering pace will do the work and annihilate them. As they counter attack for the first time since the restart, the ball goes out to the wing. Play it through to Callum, the manager orders, but instead the ball gets passed back into the midfield. A little later and there's another attack, a quick break and the captain's on the ball. Knock it to Callum, the manager shouts, but the captain plays it out to the wing instead and the move dies out. This continues for the rest of the second half. Eventually, the full-time whistle goes and the manager runs despairingly onto the pitch and runs straight up to the captain. Why on earth didn't you want to pass to Callum, he asks him, flabbergasted. Of course I wanted to pass to him, the captain said. But Callum said he didn't want the ball. Well, I've been reflecting on the Pentecost story again these last few days and I've been wondering what would have happened 2,000 years ago if the disciples had said, hang on Lord, we don't want to be past the ball. And who would blame them, I guess? They have gathered in this upper room. Perhaps they're still feeling abandonment in some way. After all, they faithfully follow Jesus for anything up to three years before he's taken by the evil powers of the cross. Yet, in the wonder of the resurrection, they walk with him again until perhaps they feel abandonment once more at the ascension. And they are waiting again. They are locked down. They are watching. They are worrying. But they are waiting. They are watching and waiting because Jesus has promised them that the Advocate will come, that he will be with them in spirit, that they will testify to him, to Jesus, and the amazing love of God. But perhaps they are worrying, locked away, having seen what the powers did to Jesus when he stood up to them in justice and for love. Would we be anxious perhaps if we were in their shoes, knowing that we could be next? Perhaps it's understandable if they don't want to be past the ball. Perhaps when we think about our call to share the good news of Jesus, we too might struggle. Perhaps we might sometimes not want to be past the ball. Perhaps the challenges just seem too great. Or we don't think that we have the gifts and what we need to do it. But for the followers of Jesus who are watching and waiting, suddenly it comes. Wind, fire and noise. And as the wind roars and the fire appears, the breath of God, the presence of Jesus, his spirit, dwells in them 
giving them the confidence despite the risks, despite the challenges, to leave their confinement and share the story of God's love and his great deeds of power with a huge crowd of people outside. People of every nation, not just the people of God, but all God's people, they begin on this great day witnessing to people of all nations. And the Spirit gives them everything that they need to share God's story of love in the world with everyone gathered there. They find they're not only sharing the story in the language of those like them, but all people. The Holy Spirit gives them everything they need. And what about us today? I wonder where we can find comfort in this Pentecost story. Well, we know, like the disciples, we have been past the ball. We are called to continue to share the love of God. We might see challenges in fulfilling that. Perhaps we struggle to make sense of the world around us, or perhaps we feel that we are lacking in what it might take. Perhaps we know that we have to take risks, but our natural conservatism fights against that. Perhaps we are frightened of doing what we know needs to change. Or perhaps we are wary as we know that to live in the Spirit is not an escape from life's challenges. In fact, it will likely bring more. Of course, we only have to follow the story through with Jesus' first followers to see some of the challenges that they faced. And yet we know we are called. The good news is that we don't have to do it in our own strength. This is the wonderful news about God's Spirit. This is the wonder of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit gives us, God's Church in the world today, all that we need. And of course, the Spirit of God is already at work. When we feel the desire to be loving, forgiving, compassionate, when we feel like being a bringer of peace, the Holy Spirit is at work. When we long to take time out from the busyness of the world and all its demands so that we can seek God and to rest in his presence, the Holy Spirit is at work. When we undertake something that we know is the right thing to do despite the challenges it will bring, even when we don't think we can do it, but we go for it anyway. The Holy Spirit is at work. When we catch ourselves not putting ourselves or our ways first and start working for the disadvantaged, the broken, the lost, the Holy Spirit is at work. When we find ourselves choosing new ways to share the love of God, not with those on the inside, but those on the outside, the Holy Spirit is at work when we discover ourselves called to heal and not harm, the Holy Spirit is at work. And so when we find ourselves sharing the story of Jesus, yes, the Holy Spirit is at work. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, pour upon us your Spirit, and set us on fire with love for you, that we may bring forth the fruits of love, joy and peace, and live to the praise of your holy name. Come, Holy Spirit, with your gracious language. Come, Holy Spirit, with your passion for all people. Come, Holy Spirit, with your uniting peace. Holy Spirit, bring in order out of chaos. Bring order to our actions and purpose to our lives. Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, move in in the deep places of creation. Move in the depth of our hearts. Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, breathe in life into all creatures. Refresh, renew, restore your people. 
Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, giver of all good gifts, help us to use our talents and abilities wisely. Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, giver of love, Kindle the hearts which without you are dull and cold and fill your church, our hearts and minds, with love. Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, giving life to dry bones, give hope and joy to all who are weary. Restore the lives which, without you, are dead. Come, renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, upon all new Christians. Come upon all who are growing in their faith. Come upon all bishops, priests and deacons upon all who seek to serve you. Come upon all who strive to proclaim your power and your presence. Come upon the powerless and oppressed. Be known among the unemployed and exploited. Come and comfort the anxious and fearful and give strength to the ill and the dying. Come, Holy Spirit, draw near to us in all grief, confusion and pain. In your graciousness, bring hope, consolation and renewal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our prayers with the Collect and our Benefice Prayer. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise. Share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And may the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, that brings us to the end of this evening's service. We hope you've enjoyed being with us and we very much hope that you'll perhaps join us again for our service at the same time, quarter past seven, next Sunday evening. Till then, have a blessed and peaceful week.
God bless and stay safe.